the format of being robot. We might not exist in the world yet, but this place did. Even before, this was a town on Earth. This place did indeed exist, yet it wasn't talked about. It existed but was lost for those who would die before their actual lives began. Though some locations of this town are still residing on Earth and are now being lived by others, here's what we know. Basically in 1998, there was a place called Elmore. Elmore is a place that exists. The people are nice, but there's sometimes trouble. A lot of the people in Elmore are regular human beings, though there's one family in particular that's more special than the rest of the town of Elmore. This is the Watterson family. There's five residents who reside in the family. Out of the other residents of the family, Anais, the younger sister, Nicole, the mother, Richard, the father, and Darwin, the adopted brother, are normal people, but there's one child in particular named Gumball. He has that name because his family gave it to him. Though he prefers to be named Zack at times. He's a troublemaker, but he's a good boy, though he was diagnosed with ADHD, a common brain disorder, and is a student at the school of Elmore, commonly known as Elmore Junior High. Usually, he tries to fit in with the other children, but he's usually left out due to his disorder. He's usually described by other students as annoying. The reason he's annoying is due to his mouthy, rude, and sarcastic behavior, but there are some people who are friends with him at the school. He even has a girlfriend named Penny, and she adores him so much. Because of his attitude and complaints about him, his parents got a call about his behavior, and they sent him to the school counselor. This counselor is known as Steve Small, or Mr. Small. After Gumball seeing the counselor after a few days, he was starting to act a little normal, and he started being likable around the school. Though after a few days, he suddenly started getting depressed for unknown reasons, it's due to him realizing that the other kids hated him before. That's when his family started noticing their child's depression. As it turns out, he got diagnosed with depression. The doctor prescribed Gumball, a medication made to help his depression. He was supposed to take it for a couple of days. He did what he was told, and he was happier and normal, oddly normal. Lucky for Gumball, it was the weekend, so he could rest. But when it came to Sunday, Gumball told his parents that he wanted a computer. Richard and Nicole hesitated but realized that Gumball was pretty bored, so he got his computer, but his parents told him to be good to get the computer. He did exactly what his parents asked him, and he got the computer he wanted. He immediately started using it, but there's a thing he wanted to try out the most, which is animating. His idea was to draw a cartoon character that looked like a blue cat and had the same clothing as him. But judging by the fact that the Watersons barely had a budget, he had no choice but to download any free software that would allow him to animate. He called this cartoon character, Gumball. The same name as him. What he animated was of Gumball walking on a loop in a white background. He wasn't going to publish this anywhere, but he wanted to only show it to himself. He thought about the potential for a future show of his, but he didn't want to make it yet. That's how proud he was. It was Thursday, and Gumball went to school, but before he went to school, he took some pills to stay calm. Before he walked to school, he noticed a man standing near the school, somewhere where he couldn't be seen, selling what looked like drugs. Judging by the fact that he was just a child and didn't know better, he asked the man for some, and he got drugs. Gumball gave the man some money, which he earned from the allowance, for the drugs. He took them and went to school as normal. It turns out there was a test, and Gumball asked to go to the bathroom. The teacher, Lucy Simeon, allowed him, but before allowing him, Lucy scolded him for a minute for asking during class, and she allowed him afterwards. This was Gumball's opportunity to take the drugs, and he did exactly that. He went back to the classroom, and so far, he was normal. Some students in the hallway reported that his behavior was getting odd. However, before Gumball got close to the classroom, he started vibrating, and he began to vomit a little fluid, and he fell to the ground. When teachers walked by and noticed this scene, Gumball had to leave early and get some help. He began to recover afterward. Gumball's eyes were slightly red, and he couldn't walk properly, almost getting ready to faint at times. 
He walked into his room and opened the window. Apparently in his head, we thought Gumball thought life was a cartoon, and he couldn't die, so he wanted to test that theory by jumping out of the window. Nicole tried to catch him, but she wasn't fast enough, and Gumbo was lying on the ground, possibly dead. Richard and Nicole, along with Darwin and Anais, were shocked and began to cry, until they noticed drugs coming out of Gumbo's pocket. Their grumpy neighbor, Mr. Robinson, was wondering what on earth was going on until he noticed Gumbo's motionless body on the ground. He called the ambulance, and they drove to the house. A bunch of vehicles were in front of Gumbo's body, with him foaming from the mouth. Gumbo was picked up, and he was being taken into one of the vehicles to be transported to the Elmore Hospital. They got to the hospital, one of the doctors put a bandage over Gumbo's head, and they laid him on the bed. His parents came on time, and he began to recover, though his pupils were gone and his mouth was completely open, drooling out blood. Gumbo was alive, but he wasn't acting right. It was almost like he was possessed. He took a stance as if he were about to attack, but Darwin shoved him back on the bed, and a doctor injected him with something to knock him out. A nurse came into the room and went over to the young and ill Watterson, and the nurse comforted him to make sure he was okay. But if it wasn't already, the odd thing happened. Gumball started groaning as a response. Suddenly, people over at Cartoon Network and numerous scientists went into the room, and apparently, they found out about Gumball's intelligence in animation, but they really wanted to figure out what's truly in his mind. A scientist told a doctor to open up Gumball's head so his brain was completely visible. The doctor did so, and then a scientist was connecting wires and cables to Gumball's body, and one of the Cartoon Network employees started connecting the cables to a TV near the bed. They thought about the potential in Gumball's mind of being the next big show. As they were connecting the wires and cables to the television, it was of Gumball, the cat, the cat version of him behind bars. This represents the fact that he's trapped and he's in a coma. His body can't function at all. The scientists thought this was interesting, so they wrote it on the clipboard, and one of them showed it to a CNN employee. The television eventually changed from static to jumbles to colors, and it started to form the following words. The Amazing World of Gumball. Following that was a title card, which read, The Mind. It was played almost like an episode. Gumball's family was also looking at the screen, finding it interesting and odd. A couple of scientists were writing on the clipboard, as they were also interested in this intelligence. It started with Gumball, but there were newer characters that looked like Gumball's family. The fat pink rabbit was Richard, the father. He acted like a slog in the show. Apparently, the female blue cat was like Gumball's already existing cartoon design, this was indeed Nicole, the mother. Gumball's siblings were also included. The smaller pink bunny was Anais. Intelligent as the brother and another being an orange goldfish, this was Darwin. They were just sitting on the couch in their home, exactly as it was in the real world. During this odd and shocking moment, Gumball's girlfriend Penny walked into the hospital room, and she noticed Gumball's lifeless body lying in the hospital bed and looked directly at the television. Gumball was indeed in a coma though. Something caught Penny's attention. She noticed the wires and cables coming out of Gumball's body toward the television. She asked what was going on, and she was informed that they found out about the intelligence of the little boy, and they were displaying his thoughts on television, not realistic but cartoony. On the television screen, it showed Gumball's school, still the same, but it showed cartoon versions of everyone in the school. Joe being a banana and calling himself Banana Joe. Perry, originally an emo girl, is now a ghostly emo girl, and everyone else was just inanimate objects and animals, but what caught Penny's attention was who she looked like. Penny was a yellow fairy, but in a shell, yet Gumball still realized how beautiful she was, so his mind captured her like this. Gumball did exactly what he did in real life at school, but didn't pass out or anything. All he did was start trouble in the school and get chased in the halls, though he also dragged his adopted brother into the chase. Though this imaginary show was odd, it will certainly be a hit like other shows like Ed Ed and Eddie, SpongeBob SquarePants, Phineas and Ferb, and many others. Though this show was coming to an end, a lot of the other characters were introduced and written down by the scientists. 
there was nothing else to write down, so Cartoon Network employees picked up what the scientists wrote down and sent them to a man named Ben Botlett. As Ben was receiving what he got, the family, doctors and Penny noticed Gumball's body vibrating and twitching, and then it stopped. Gumball passed away, 